It's story time. Uh, I'm going to be doing chapter one of the True Confessions of Charlotte Doyle with you through this video. Um, so I want you to follow along. And then there are going to be a couple of times where I'm going to ask you to stop and draw a picture. So make sure you have a piece of paper in front of you that you can draw along with me. So chapter one, you are also going to get to hear some of my terrible, terrible voices. I do a really bad attempt at a British accent. I also do girl voices. And so you can, it's okay to laugh at me. I, I understand. Um, but that's part of the fun of this book. Chapter one, just before dusk in the late afternoon of June 16th, 1832, I found myself walking along the crowded docks of Liverpool, England following a man by the name of Grummage. Though a business associate of my father, Mr. Grummage was, like my father, a gentleman. It was he my father delegated to make the final arrangements for my passage to America. He was also to meet me when I came down from school on the coach, then see me safely stowed aboard the ship that my father had previously selected. Mr. Grummage was dressed in a black frock coat with a stovepipe hat that added to his considerable height. His somber, sallow face registered no emotion. His eyes might have been those of a dead fish. Miss Doyle, he said as I stepped from the Liverpool coach. Yes, sir. Are you Mr. Grummage? I am. Pleased to meet you, I said, dipping a curtsy. Quite, he returned. Now, I'm picturing in my mind he's this really fancy guy with, like, a big hat, and he's got, like, really fancy, uh, remember this is the 1800s, so he's got one of those old-fashioned, like, suits on, um, so he's a really fancy guy, and, um, her family is pretty rich, so she's got fancy, a fancy dress on, and so, they're fancy folk. Now, Miss Doyle, if you would be so good as to indicate which is your trunk, I have a man here to carry it. Next, please oblige me by following, and everything shall be as it is meant to be. Why do you say goodbye to my chaperone? <sighs> is that necessary? She's been very kind. Make haste, then. In a flutter of nervousness, I identified my trunk, threw my arms about Miss Emerson, my sweet companion for the trip down, and bid her a tearful farewell. Then I rushed after Mr. Grummage, who had already begun to move on. A rough-looking porter laboring behind carried my trunk upon his back. Our little parade reached a dockside in good order. There, I became instantly agog <coughs> Excuse me. at the mass of ships that lay before us, masts and spars thick as the bristles on a brush. Everywhere I looked, I saw mountains of rare goods piled high. Now, right now, for this next section, I want you to make sure I'm going to reread this paragraph, and I want you to draw a picture of what you're visualizing in that first box. I want you to draw a picture of what you're visualizing while I'm reading this section, what you're picturing in your mind. Our little parade reached dockside in good order. There I became instantly agog at the mass of ships that lay before us, masts and spars thick as the bristles on a brush. Everywhere I looked, I saw mountains of rare goods piled high, bales of silk and tobacco, chests of tea, a parrot, a monkey. Oh yes, the smell of the sea was intoxicating to one who knew little more than the smell of the trim-cut lawns and the fields of the Barrington School. Then, too, the surging crowds of workers, sailors, and merchants, all rough-hewn, brawny uh, sailors, uh, sorry, brawny men, created an exotic late-afternoon hubbub. All in all, it was a most delicious chaos, which, while mildly menacing, was no less exciting because of that. Indeed, in some vague way, I had the feeling that it was all there for me. So right now, I'm going to pause the video and give you a chance to finish up your drawing of what you're seeing on this boat dock. Mr. Grummage, sir, I called over the din. What is the name of the ship I'm to sail on? Mr. Grummage paused briefly to look at me as though surprised I was there, to say nothing of asking a question. Then from one of his pockets, he drew a screw of paper. Squinting at it, he pronounced, The Seahawk. Is she a British or American? American. A merchant ship? To be sure. How many masts? I don't know. Will the other families already be on board? I should think so. He answered, exasperation in his voice, meaning he's getting irritated that she's asking all these questions. 
For your information, Miss Doyle, I received word that departure was departure was being put off. But when I checked with the captain directly, he informed me that there must be have been some misunderstanding. The ship is scheduled to leave with the first tide tomorrow morning, so there could be no delay.